Please turn your Bibles to Psalm 37. And when, if you were here, kung gari mo atong last time I gave a message, you might be tempted to say, Oops, Psalm 37 na pud. Just hold on. If you still remember the last message I gave in this, from this chapter of the book of Psalm, I mentioned three things, three things that we can get from this psalm. First is the situation of the godly. Second is the struggle of the godly. The third is the solution to the struggle of the godly. Ang kahimtang sa Diyos nun, ang iyahang kalisod, o ang kasulbaran sa iyahang kalisod, kung sa Sibuano pa. Now from this psalm, we see that the godly sees the prosperity of the ungodly and struggles with envy, struggles with disappointment, discontentment, leading to anger. And the solution offered to the godly in the psalm is to remember God. Remember God's commands. Remember God's promises. Remember God's character. Now today I will be talking about Psalm 37 again, but focus will be on the command and promise of verse 4. Psalm 37 verse 4 tells us, Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Pagkalipay diha kang hiyoba, ugiang ihatag ang tinguha, mga tinguha sa imong kasing-kasing. Now before we... Look at this verse. Magmuduol ta, tubangan sa gino. Let us ask for His help. Let us pray. What a delight it is, O Lord, to join the hosts of heaven. Although unseen reality for us, but it is real, O Lord, and it gives us much delight to know that we are in your special presence to praise our living God, our Creator, our Sustainer, and our Savior. And also, Lord, what a joy it is to again hear your word. To hear you speak to us through your word. And it is our prayer, Lord, that out of this text we will hear your voice. Ug taga imig kasing kasing ginoo nga anda maminaw, mudawat ni ini. Even, Lord, as we sang earlier, trust and obey. Help us to trust you. Trust your word. And even, Lord, that this will lead us. To obey your will. Lord, nag-ampu mi nga ikaw muhatag o igong abilidad sa imong alagad. As he speaks your word, help him, Lord, to be faithful to the scripture. Help him to speak clearly. And help him, Lord, even to see the connection, to present the connection of your word, even to our struggles as your people. And help your people, Lord, as they listen to your word, give them open hearts and willingness to be touched, influenced by your word. We commit to you all of these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Nagsimpul na yung kaayo ang kung ato makita din hi ang outline. Duharagid kabutang atong makita. First is the command. Una ang sugo. Unsa man ang sugo, delight yourself in the Lord. O gang ikaduha is the promise. The promise is, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Iyang ihatag ni mo ang mga gitinguha sa imong kasing-kasing. So naho na to ang command, ang sugo ni Adinhi. Delight yourself in the Lord. And here the Lord wants us to feel the force of the concern behind the verse. When He said, delight yourself in the Lord, And He will give you the desires of your heart. There is a concern behind this. Because if you notice, the Lord raises the text, delight yourself in the Lord, into the level of a command. God is not giving here a suggestion. Dili ingon nga sugyot, nga okay, yung inyong buhaton, okay po, og dili, it's really up to you. When God says, delight yourself in the Lord, it is a command. It is like wearing a seat belt, the seat belt, putting on the seat belt, labi nagpaduong nang maglupad ang eroplano. Dili pariha o life jacket, nga igabot ni mo sa barko, di man ka mangitag life jacket, nga ibutang ni mo. But here, it is a must. And to even feel the force of the concern behind this command, the Lord connects this command in our text to other commands. So di lang kay usara kasugo in verse 4, but we find there are so many commands scattered in this chapter. If you notice verse 1, do not fret, that's a command. Do not fret because of evildoers, Be not envious toward wrongdoers. And then also in verse 3, trust in the Lord. Again, that is a command. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Verse 5, it's another command. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him and He will do it. La inapod nga command. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. La inapod nga command, verse 8, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing. So, dini makita na to, no collection of commands. One command after another. Unya, makita na to ang connection sa verse 4 to these other commands. Now, the question is, what's God's concern behind this command? Na ang sugo, no? kung uh, mo-focus na sa verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord. Now, what is the reason behind what's in God's heart through the psalmist when he gave this command. Now, these commands are given to help a struggling saint deal with envy, insecurity, and anger in his attitude and reaction towards the prosperity of the wicked. Naadiha ang mga dili Dios nun, ni adinhi ang Dios nun. Nagprosper ang mga wicked. Mao ni ang sitwasyon dinhi and in this present realm we know that the godly and the ungodly live together. Tingali sa inyong pamilya ikaw ra mo ay Kristohanon. O tingali sa in you in Mohang school no you, you see there are most of your classmates dili mga christians ikaw ra maoy nagatuo 
ni Christ. Or maybe in the office, in the workplace. And this is a reality that is present in the realm. The righteous live together with the unrighteous. That's a fact. That is something that we experience every day. And when we open our eyes, we see another reality. The godly is tempted to envy the ungodly in their prosperity. And if the godly does not know how to deal with envy, it can become so strong leading to insecurity and to being angry. So verse 1, do not fret because of evildoers. Do not be envious toward wrongdoers. Ayaw, ayaw. Kedilikado yun. And we know that one sin can lead to another sin. If that envy in the heart is not checked dili na siya putlon di madil delikado kay na nga muhatod na nga hangto pa sa punto nga masuko kas Ginoo sama sa experience di ba ni Asap if we turn to Psalm 73 Ini makit anato si Asaph. He says in verse 1, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Psalm 73. Now that's true of God. God is good. God is good to those who are pure in heart, those who are committed to Him. He is committed to the godly. But here, Asaph is speaking, knowing the truth, and even looking at his own experience. So, experiential knowledge ni ang iyang gishare ngan hinato. Ngan uman, tanawa, unsay giingon niya. Verse 2. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped. Why? For I was envious of the arrogant. As I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no pains in their death, and their body is fat. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like mankind. Therefore pride is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eye bulges with fatness. The imaginations of their heart run riot. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on high. They have set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue parades through the earth. Therefore his people return to this place and waters of abundance are drunk by them. They say, how does God know? And is their knowledge with the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked and always at ease. They have increased in wealth. And then he says in verse 13, Surely in vain, it's useless. I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. For I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. Oh, if I have said, if I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I pondered to understand this, it was troublesome in my sight until, until I came into the sanctuary of God, then I perceived their end. Surely, speaking about God, you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. How they are destroyed in a moment. They are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. Like a dream when one awakes. O oh Lord, when aroused, you will despise their form. When my heart was embittered and I was pierced within, that I was senseless and ignorant 
I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have taken hold of my right hand. With your counsel, you will guide me and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of all your works. And then he tells us in verse 1, Surely God, surely God is good. God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Now that's the experience of Asaph, the record. Then he's a sacred book. And here how is how it happens. Believers see and notice unbelievers. They notice that unbelievers have something that they do not have and realize that what unbelievers have are the things that they want. Makakita nga sa mga di magtutuo, makakita og unsay naa sa mga dili magtutuo. Pero di dang dihara kutob makit-an nga og unsay naa nila mo may nang ako ang ganahan nganong naa man nila and then what happens the temptation is to compare naa da yon ang comparison nganong sila naa man ako wala why do they have but i don't what is wrong but then you compare your person and the things you do with their person and the evil that they are doing. So mo na ang comparison. And so, naa na ang sunod. Believers then struggle with envy. Believers enter into temptation to envy unbelievers in their prosperity. The temptation then is to question the goodness the justice of God. What is wrong with God? Simple ra kayo, una lang, kita ka sa mga unbelievers, and then you see what they have, but then it doesn't stop there. You look at yourself, oh, they have what I have. I am a child of God. I am a child of the King. Nga man nga ang mga kaayuhan tu a Manila wa man din hinako. Nya mo na ugdi na ma-deal at that point. Delikado kayo. And in order to deal with the problem of envy, God gives commands, not suggestions. Why? Because envy is so powerful and dangerous. Muna diha makasabot ang anong di man suggestion lang ang gihatag sa Ginoo ng anong sugo mang yun. Why? Because we can never underestimate we should not underestimate the power of envy and the damage it can do. Ug di ta magbantay. Pareha sa usa ka thread no sa usa ka forum nga member ko Ngay usa ka kauban dito nga mao ni ang ihang siya may nag-open ani nga thread and I would let me quote at length no wa na ko mas summarize I just saw this last night He says recently I visited a friend who just moved into a new apartment and everything there was so beautiful and luxurious that it totally overwhelmed me he had such a nice, peaceful garden. I wish I had such a place to sit down and gather my thoughts. 
When I was there in his apartment, I was totally overwhelmed and just wanted to get out and forget all that I had seen. I could just think about how bad my life is compared to his life. He has so we he has a well-paid job and friends and a nice apartment and I have no job, no friends, no nice apartment and on top of that I'm also physically sick. That was just too much for me in that moment, too much to compute. I feel like I blew it all. Maybe I could have had the same thing, but I made so many false de decisions in my life. That was my mistake. But then also having all these diseases at once, it's, it's so hard to grasp. If I only had like one disease, then it would be much easier to deal with. But I have so many things at all, all at once, and not only small things, but major things, which can be dangerous. And I'm reminded of those diseases all the time. I cannot even ignore them or to try to forget about them. It's all so tragic. Years ago, I was doing much better. I had much more discipline and also wasn't that depressed. I was in better shape and working out and then I found out about having a rare genetic syndrome which can be dangerous on top of the other smaller diseases which I already had before which I also which also dragged me down and then I feel into deep depression and now I feel like I lost everything. I feel like I have nothing to look forward to in this life. I feel like I'm trapped between this life and the next life. And at the same time, I'm scared of death. Sometimes I feel like losing my mind. I wish this was all just a bad dream, but it's not. Others are happy and without sorrows and I'm always depressed. I don't know how to get this an abundant life with Jesus, which Jesus talked about. I am tired of always struggling and worrying and being depressed. Life seems so senseless to me. It's always this struggle. I have been in this dark valley for so many years now with no sun shining through. Wow. Saon man na ninyo pag-respond. But here in our text, God tells a struggling saint, a saint struggling with envy, Look at me! Not on what you see! Do not obey your feeling. Do what I say! Look at me. Focus on me. Not on your circumstance. And so here he gives a specific command. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight in me. Now the question is, what does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? That's the next question. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? Number one, delighting in the Lord is about luxury. It's about luxury. Why do I say that? Because the word translated delight comes from a root word that can mean to be luxurious, to be pampered. The idea is to have far more than what is needed. Subra, subra, kaysa unsay gikinahanglan. Muni gustong ipakita sa ginoo when he tells us, delight yourself in the Lord. You have more than what you need. Mutana ta, kumagisgo tag kaligo, Pila may gikinahanglan para makaligo. 
I had a very misod nga situation when I was in Dinagat. I was told before I took a bath nga karon ra bang taod-taod pastor i-off na nila ang tubig nakalimot man ko. So I went to the bathroom and consumed I was pouring the water into the bowl and and then I I remembered lah wa na agas. So one fourth na lay na bilin. Moya kung gikaligo kay pag o nako sa faucet tinuod wa gyud nagi agas. So ligo og one fourth na lang tubig bigs balde nahimo ra man sad. Pero mga tana ta pila magi atong kinahanglan para kaligo na ako makaingon ko bisag one fourth last balde pwede na. But here God is telling us, you have the ocean. Di lang kay balde ang akong ihatag ninyo. You have the whole ocean. When we delight ourselves in the Lord, we do not only have a pail, we have the ocean. Why? Because God is more than enough to meet our needs and what we really want in life. And if you have the ocean, you do not need a pail of water. If you have the light of the sun, do you need a candle? No. So to delight in the Lord is to make the Lord himself as our number one source of satisfaction and happiness in life. It is to say, God, you are more than enough to me. Sobra na kaginoo, kaayo, sa unsay akong gikinahanglan. Wa na ko'y pangitaon pa. Mone language sa atong kasing-kasing if we can say that I delight myself in the Lord. The Lord is more than enough. Yes, I have, I still have needs, but my God is more than enough to fulfill, to feed those needs. It is to say with Asaph from the text we read in Psalm 73, 25 to 27 and 28, Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. And then he says, But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. Yes, God is not the only one in heaven and on earth, but compared with God, all others do not really matter. Tino din his kalibutan, naghan pa mang kaayo. We don't only have God here in this realm. Pero og ang ginuorag kita, pananglitan lang, makaingontang, wa na, lipay na, tagbaw na, Matulpas Tagalog, wala ka nang hahanapin pa. Delighting in the Lord is about luxury, my dear brethren and friends. And also another thing, delighting in the Lord is about priority. Priority. It is to tell God, it's you that I want first and the good things you give come only second. Let me repeat that. When you delight in the Lord, it's to tell God, God, it's you that I want first and the good things that you can give me come only second. Yes, it is true. As we are told in James chapter 1, verse 17, that every good thing, every perfect gift comes from above. Because God is a good God and out of the goodness of God, we have so many good things in life. But to say that we delight in the Lord, we say yes, those are good things. But they only come second in my priority. God is first. 
Yes, the good things that the Lord has given me, they are good and I'm thankful to the Lord for that. But nothing, no one compares with the Lord himself. And when you can say that, you can say that you are delighting yourself in the Lord. Why? Because delighting in the Lord is about priority. Envy, insecurity, and getting angry become a big problem because we do not have the right priorities in life. And this can be seen in the kind of questions we ask. We do not ask the right questions. We ask, what do I not have? But what do I have? Ang atong pangutana, unsa may wa hindi rin ako. Imbis ang tang pangutana, unsa may naan ako. Muna nga, ug, muna nga, muda ko kayo ang envy, ang kasina, kay ang pangutana, di man nga, unsa may nian ako. Ang pirming pangutana, unsa may wa na ako. Nga, ang tubag, tu ar bagis pikas. Tu aman lagi niya. No, ang question ni mo is not right. Unsa may ni anako. And let's remember that life is about learning how to live with the fact that we do not and cannot have everything in this life. Why? We do not need everything. There are things we simply cannot have. This is a realistic way of looking at things. But the problem is we focus on what we do not have instead of what we do have. Yes, we do not have everything, but we have so many things. After all, we started with nothing. Anong giingnan ta sa 1 Timothy 6, verse 7 to 8? God, through the Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, he says, For we have brought nothing into the world. Very elementary truth. Simple ra kaayo, pero mo na, na-complicated ang ato ang kinabuhi because ang mga simple, mamiss naman ato. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything but of it either. If we have food and covering with this, we shall be content. And also Job chapter 1 verse 21, he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this simple but often neglected truth gave Job the strength to stand in the darkest time of his personal history. When envy wants you to look at what you do not have, focus on what you do have. And tell yourself, the things that I do have are gifts. Something I do not deserve. And also, another question we ask, oh, why do I have? What do I have? And then, we simply stop there. So, ang una, ang problema nga, unsa may wa na ko? Karun, kakita na ka, oh, unsa may naa na ko? But the question is, what do I have? But then, we need to go further and ask, who do I have? We have to remind ourselves that if you have God, you do not only have a pail, but you have the ocean. We must always remind ourselves of these truths. Mauna nga, huwag makalimot ganita init. Prone yung kaayo ta si NB. Daghan kaayo ng mga kalisod na pwede rauntang malikayan. Now, after giving us a command, delight yourself in the Lord, itagaan po ta sa ginoo o promise, He will give you the desires 
of your heart. He will give you the desires of your heart. Now, does a mother need to tell her son she will give him candy to make him wash the dishes? Kinahanglan ba God? Nga dung, ugasi ang plato, taga antikag kindi. Kinahanglan pa ba God nga ibutang siyang atubangan, taga antikag kindi para mutuman ang bata? Does God need to attach a promise to every command in order for us to obey Him? Both? No. God has all the right to command us and demand our obedience. God owns us. He is our sustainer. People of God, He is our Savior. He has every right to tell us what to do. And it would not be wrong for Him to command us. Oh, but God here makes the command sweet by giving a promise to encourage obedience. The promise connected to the command is meant to motivate. Truly, God is good. He is not only sovereign. He is good. He commands, yes. But He motivates us. He encourages us by giving us sweet promises. Delight yourself in the Lord. God says, Here's the promise I'll give you. The desires of your heart. Now, delighting in God means being one with God. When we make God our greatest delight in life, something amazing happens. We share His desires. His desires become ours. And this is how we know that we delight in God. We will want what God wants. This is what holiness and godliness is about in practical terms. Wanting what God wants and hating what God hates. Now this is the problem when we look at our relationship with God as simply a give, give and take relationship. We give God what He wants and we expect Him to give us what we want. Lahi ang gustos ginoo na apu kay imong gusto. So aron makuha ni mo imong gusto kay ang ginoo ra may makahatag sa imong gusto, buhaton ni mo ang gustos ginoo para makuha ni mo ang imong gusto. Dili ni mao ang giingon sa ginoo dinhi. People want clothes, house and lot, education for their kids, travel, vacation, good health. So they do God's commands to get to the promise. The promise is what they want because it gives them what they want. They do not really want God and His commands. And that is why when we do not get what we want, we feel bad. And many people have in fact left God. They have, they have accused God of lying. Abi ba na ko, sundo na ko ang pamaagis ginoon mo, asinso ko, naunsa naman hinoon ni, napubre naman hinoon. Kaya wak nila masabti, nga ang gusto sa ginoon, you share my concerns. O kung sa'y akong gusto, maupoy imong gusto, o kaya ang akong gusto, may imong gusto, taga-anti ka sa imong gusto, nga naman. Kaya nga imong gusto, ako mang gusto. Dili kay murag atong i-bribe ang ginoo. Lord, I'll be faithful to you. Give me that car. Give me that man to be my husband. Give me that woman to be my wife. I'll be faithful. Murag atong ibutang, murag na ibutang sa kontrata ang ginoo. Muna, that's not faith, that's presumption. And many preachers are rich because, mauna, ang ilahang paagi. If you will be faithful to God, and of course, that means giving to the offering and 
be involved in the ministry, God will bless your life, brother. Yeah, that that only to mu testimony kato mga ni asinso pod. Oh, Mora po tuyo dad on sa tubangan. Diwa tong wa mo asinso. Ha? Ah, ako pag-join ako ani nga ministry. Wow! Tay sikad ra ako ato na karon. Look at my car. Ha? Tanawa kong auto. Ang puti pa na. Wa pa diha ang blue. And people look, wow! If I follow this way, wow! I'll be like that man. I'll be like that woman. Nawa sila kasabot. Ang giingon sa ginoong. Ako mo ay i-desire, ang akong desire mo ay i-desire, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Of course, God can give all of these things, but remember, they're not the best. He wants us to give us the best. Himself. Himself. And in order to claim the promise, first ask, Is God whom I desire the most? Do I want God what God wants? If your answer is yes, then you can be sure that you will receive more of God. You will know more of God. You will never be disappointed. When our chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever, He will give Himself to us more and more. Our desire will be locked with God and what He desires. In fact, this is God's complaint against His old covenant people during Jeremiah's time. He said in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to you for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. The Lord alone can truly satisfy, but the people are not content with Him. He offers them Himself for their satisfaction, but they have turned their backs on Him to find other sources that will not really satisfy. But what is it that God wants? Now, what God wants are not hidden that we cannot know it. It's in His Word. And right at the heart of what God wants is in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. And we know, it's not something that is hidden. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to become conformed to the image of His Son, so that He, the Son, would be the firstborn among many brethren. Here God has made His desire known. Yang yablihan ang yang kasing-kasing din He. O unsag ang iyang gusto. He works in every situation, good and bad, in order to make those whom He has foreknown and predestined to be like Jesus, His Son. God wants all of His children to be like Jesus. That's why in the wisdom of God, in the providence of God, he arranges situations. Panahon sa kaabundansya para makitaan o unsay reaksyon na to, makita si Christ. Panahon po nga kuhao niya ang kaabundansya. Panahon po sa healthy ta, na panahon po kuhaon sa gino ang atong good health, ilisdan niya sakit para opportunity for us to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. So muna ang dako yung pangutana na to is, can I in this situation, in this situation I am facing, 
Can I be like Jesus? And when you feel that you like you lack something to be like Jesus, do you think the Father will not give it to you? Lord, I don't know what to do. God is the source of all knowledge and wisdom. Lord, I don't know. I want to be like Jesus in this situation. I just don't know how. I know the word of God, but in this particular situation, I just don't know, Lord, how this truth of the word of God can be translated into this particular situation that the truth will become not only part of my thinking, but part of my living. I just don't know how, Lord. Help me. Do you think God will, with, will withhold the wisdom that we need? No. Ano man, timaw na gusto sa ginoo nga mahitabo na to. And that's why we can look at the different situations we face positively. Mao gina nga rason nga nupod no nga kitang mga Kristohanon moay kinadakan gyud na ugnisi aning kalibutana. Di man pod ingon nga tanang higayon magkatawa ta. Pero kita maoy naay kinadakan nga katawa why? Because of these realities that are ours in Christ. So when God says, delight yourself in the Lord in Him, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Now this is a good opportunity for us to review our list of priorities. Husbands and wives, do you delight in the Lord more than your spouses? Parents, do you delight in the Lord more than your children and their accomplishments? Singles, do you delight in the Lord more than all the advantages of being single or perhaps the possibility of getting married? Delighting in the Lord will keep you away from any romantic relationship with an unbeliever. Yeah, because we don't want to displease him. Members, do you delight in the Lord? Delighting in the Lord will give you the zeal to continue, although sometimes you feel perhaps alone and lonely. Sa atong nakitaan, sa atong adult Bible class, there are still changes that needs to be done in the life of a brother or a sister. In our life as a church, there are times you feel, wow, will we be able to reach that level? And that can be daunting. So I'm overtaken as a discouragement. But here God is saying, you delight in me. Kalipay. Ngan hinako. Nakining pagkalipay na to diha sa Ginoo maghatag na tog strength sa bisan unsa nga mga kalisod nga moabot sa kinabuhi. Panahon na we feel we are just exhausted. Feel we cannot continue when the battle is so fierce. Pareha tong basa ganiha, ready to give up. Then you're reminded. You delight yourself in Him. And when He is our number one delight in this life, that will translate into strength, meaning that we can continue in our fight. And for those who are here, our unbelieving friends, you know you do not delight in the Lord. How can you delight in Him when you do not trust Him? Trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Then you will begin to see how desirable His person and commands are. This delight will make your obedience sweet. Now, what do you mean? No, do you mean we present ninyo nga 
Parehas gusto ipakita sa uban nga ang kinabuhi sa Kristuhanon permi lang malipayon. Daghan nga mga kalisod. But you can say it's worth it. Kaya kung naani mo ang kalipay diha sa ginoo, lisod man, pero makaya ra tungod sa tabang sa ginoo. Tungod kayang example usab sa atong ginoong Jesus. Manang giingnan kita sa book of Hebrews. That we are to, akong basahon lang, no? But that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising its shame. Trust first. Obey. As we sang earlier, there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Ayaw, ka, ayaw obey una. No. Trust first. Trust Jesus. And when you are in Christ, and when you know how desirable His person is, obedience will come and you see that it is worth it. So delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Do the command with God's grace and you can count on God's promise because God is able. He is faithful. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for giving yourself to us. Wa nagilain paginoo nga makahatag o tinuod nga satisfaction, meaning, contentment in this life, only you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have opened our eyes to this reality that nothing, no one really satisfies. Ikaw ragyod ginoo. And we pray, Lord, for those who have probably forgotten this truth or maybe already doubting or maybe those who have already stayed away from this Lord bring them again to remembrance to the realization O Lord ikaw ragyod ginoo may makahatag tinuod nga katagbawan and if we are happy we are content with you Lord that will put envy to death and Lord that will keep us from insecurity that will keep us away from discouragement, from disappointment, and being angry, being fretful in this life, O oh Lord, so that others will know that there is a God who does great things to lowly creatures like us, so that the glory will be given to you alone. And you know, Lord, also that we have friends here who are still not connected to you, to Christ, we also pray, Lord, that you will, out of your goodness, you will make them see their need of the Savior. Oh, that they will trust in Him and find also, Lord, themselves obeying our Master. Oh, may it be, Lord, that you will continue to write these words sa mong tagsa-tagsa ka mga kasing-kasing. We commit to you all of these things our Heavenly Father, in your Son's most precious name. Amen.